welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast. I'm your host, Jez FM. The Magical Learning Podcast is a podcast that looks at important topics that relate to business and life, and we have a bit of fun with them. We know that the best way to learn is to have a laugh, and so we do our best to tickle your ribs. Today, we are going to be talking about the intersection of fun and work. Now, those two things don't typically go together. Uh, it's typically when you hear the words, this is going to be fun at work, it's typically horrifying. Um, but we try to break down the actual fun of this. Now, this is a Reflections podcast, which means each team member is bringing their own thoughts on the topic to the podcast. We've got Al, who is a facilitator and our farming facilitator extraordinaire. And we've got Danette, our director of learning and co-founder on the call today. And you've got me, host of the podcast, podcast producer, and your friend and guide throughout this t- conversation. So enjoy. And as always, everybody, have a magical week. Alrighty, hello everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. We're just having a team episode this week, so very exciting. We're going to catch up with the team and hear their thoughts. But before we do that, I think we've got to check in with the team and see how they're going. And first on today was Al. Al, it's been a little while. How are you going? Oh, I'm going great. Thanks, Jez. Yeah, I've been getting a little busy with work, which I've been enjoying, and I'm looking forward to one of the benefits of living up here on the Gold Coast. This weekend, they've got the big air show. So I'm yeah, looking forward to seeing some of the big planes come through, which they're already flying over today. Wow. So, I mean, Al, let's just, let's just back up a little bit. So what's the new work? And then tell us a little bit about what this air show is, because I haven't heard of it personally. Uh, the work is uh, training people at an RTO into the crane industry. So dogging, rigging and all sorts of crane licenses, which I'm really enjoying. Um, just long days, which I'm taking a little bit of getting used to. And the air show... I don't know the name of it, Jez, but it's one of those things that you know people come from even internationally to see it. Like there's big bombers, and I think it's a, I'm guessing like an FA-18, like one of those amazing jets that flies and just disappears straight up into the sky and fires out like firework type things behind it. To, you know, if there's a bomb chasing it, the bomb will chase those fireworks instead, and yeah, and just the, the roar of those engines. <laughs> at the Gold Coast, get on the crane and then you can go and watch a bomber and have your own Top Gear experience. Top Gun experience. Gosh, I'm all over the shop there. But, uh, yes. That's a great way of putting it, Jess. That's my moment of Top Gun on the beach. That's it. (laughs) Fantastic. Well, uh, Al, great to have you on again. Um, And let's go to Danette. Danette, how's your week going? Yeah, my um, week's been really good, Jess. And Going on the aviation theme, last Saturday I flew down to Melbourne on a brand spanking new A220, which Qantas had bought um, a couple of them because when I flew back from Melbourne on Monday, I was also on the A220, very, very, and they actually said it was the inaugural flight. So that was very exciting. Beautiful looking planes, two seats on one side, three on the other. Um, Yeah, awesome. Um, I also went to a ball for the first time in forever on um, Saturday night with Allegra and we went uh, to raise money for a beautiful charity that um, it's called the House of Hope or St Mary's House of Hope which um, basically provides things like food and showers and washing machines etc for homeless people Um, and it was just such a beautiful event and this week I've been traveling a little bit and I'm at home at the moment and very exciting for all of those who um, follow our animals at the farm we saw ernie the echidna last week as well very very exciting and he is getting bigger and bigger graham was on the mower and rang me while i was inside working and he's like come outside quick with your camera and there was that ernie and boy did he move fast so anyway it's good that ernie is alive and well because it feels like spring when ernie is moving yeah, we love Ernie. Um, we recommend checking out the social medias for the uh, HD clips uh, from previous years as well. You can see the growth. A uh, bit of a celebrity at the farm. So um, today we're going to be talking about bringing more fun to work, which was a topic that I'm quite interested in. I love uh, the sort of conjunction of fun and work. 
And, you know, as Al and I were talking beforehand, they're not, they don't always go hand in hand. Sometimes when you think of fun and you think of work, you don't think of those two as a Venn diagram that overlap at all. But hopefully today we can kind of break that down a little bit. So before we get into today's conversation, so it's a Reflections podcast, which means that we'll be all bringing our own stories. I just thought I'd kind of go across the internet and give a bit of an internet sweep at what they say fun is, because fun can kind of be a couple of different things. So starting with our classic place to start, Oxford Dictionary. And the definition there is lighthearted pleasure, enjoyment, or amusement, or boisterous joviality or merrymaking. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, joviality, not a word you hear too often, uh, but it's good to hear it in this context. <laughs> Um, I wanted to kind of go then a little bit to Reddit because this is the other place that people tend to go to when they can't find a solution on Google. So this person suggested, oh, so I should say their username is pme underscore your underscore definitions. So this is someone who's into definitions, I guess. And they said that I'd say fun is enjoyment without responsibility. It's not just something we like. It's something that we like for its own sake and something that we don't have to do or get anything out of. And that explains why forced fun seems so stupid. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting no another way to look at it. There's this impression in people's brains that when we go to work, we need to be serious. And I actually really like this topic because our brain actually works better when we are lighthearted, when we are having fun because that doesn't tend to trigger threat responses. So actually, yeah, I like, love the topic. And I also want to point out to our listeners and our viewers that fun actually should be a critical element in the workplace. And obviously there are some like first responders, it's hard to be having fun in that moment if you're responding to something that is an emergency. And yet in some in between times, if we can have fun, it just increases that connection. Um, it, it just allows us to work with our brain to be more awesome. So that's what those definitions um, brought up for me, Jez. And I love the fact that you sourced a number of different sources around those definitions. I'm curious on what everybody else thought around no responsibility. I'm thinking you're seeing that differently to me, Danette, where to me at work, I thought we still need to be responsible. Yeah, we can't just be the class clown, but I'm wondering how you're seeing that differently. So that's a great question, Al. So for me, um, obviously we're responsible for our job for what we do and we can have fun and the two aren't always mutually exclusive. So as a manager or a leader, I see part of my responsibility as can I make this workplace one where people want to come to work, they want to bring their best self, and knowing that the brain science says that the more fun we have, then it's, it works for our, us and our brains collectively. So um, I sort of see them as, yes, when I, I heard that no responsibility or with enjoyment without responsibility, it's like, I don't always have to come up with the reason for us having fun. I can oh, just yes. enjoy the fun, if that makes sense. So, um, whereas I think how you interpreted it was, you know, we, we still need to be aware of that responsibility. Absolutely, we need to make sure we're good from a work health and safety, etc. And sometimes maybe someone else brings the fun in and I get to just enjoy it without going, oh, I had to make the fun. Someone else got to do that. Does that help? That does, do great, I love that, the way you see that. The other one that really stood out for me is a social interaction where yeah, some workplaces, and I, I wonder whether it's different people. A story that came to my mind when I saw this topic, Jazz, was out at the farm. I go back and help Andy out at harvest. It's Andy's farm. And Andy has a bit of fun. Actually, Andy has a lot of fun. Calls me the paddock manager because I manage, you know, there's about six different machines that, you know, if one of those machines slows down, you know, all the others slow down. It's something I do really well. And one morning I showed up early because the machine had broken down. As each person arrived, I gave them a job. When Andy arrived, I gave Andy a job and Andy just stood there and he said, good morning, Alan. <laughs> and I realized I was focused on the machines, which was my skill. Andy was focused on the people, which was his skill. And every year when I go back to the harvest, I learn so much from Andy on focusing on the people can be a lot more fun than being focused on the machines, which yet comes back to you know, that social interaction. 
I think you had a good insight there about um, the responsibility factor because I've actually gone and done a little bit more research and I've looked at the top most fun organizations and what the employees said makes them fun. So this is this may be different than what people think. So I, I had a look at something called vantagelens.com. It had a blog about top 15 fun places to work. Number one was Google. And here's the reasons people put. So this is interesting. Free food, nap pods, fun games, physicians at work, hybrid work days, and financial assistance. Okay? So that's some interesting elements they said made it fun. Next was Apple. Uh, they had the reason their employees enjoyed it, uh, vacation and lots of leave, ability to buy stocks from Apple, parental leave, unique health programs, gym credits, and retirement plans. So these don't really sound that fun, except for the fun game ones, maybe the nap pods. But a lot of these are kind of about more uh, things around additional elements or support elements from the workplace, you know. It's almost, some of it is almost unrelated to the work, you would sort of think, you know. Uh, like, I mean, while it is re related, I don't, you know, childcare support is sort of, I guess, something that is not part of Apple's core business model, you know. So it is interesting that they kind of do things like that. Uh, what was interesting was you had to go down to number six uh, NVIDIA to really get into what you would typically think of as millennial fun, which is refreshment areas, board games, quizzes, video games, pool table, uh, generous vacation time and flexible work hours. But again, it still comes down to that sort of flexibility. So I actually want, I wonder, Al, if a little bit of your insight from before was important, which is that, you know, maybe there is, th there can be some difference between fun and responsibility. Maybe sometimes those two things don't go together, but some of that can also be giving the space for a lack of responsibility, I think, for some of your employees to, to build in some of the fun so that it's not everything is do or die you know, you give that sort of buffer zone and then that's where the fun can almost be had and then, you know, you get new ideas and what have you based on those results. But yeah, let's jump into this week's topic. So it's bringing more fun to work. We're going to be talking about some of our experiences and what this means for us. Um, Al, I might start with you. So when you were thinking about this topic, what sort of came to your mind? Um, one thing that came to my mind, Jess, was um, from, from my experience is we can always point out what is wrong versus what is you know, something better, what's a new way of doing things. I remember hearing how we'll happily stay where we are in the misery of certainty versus going into uncertainty and trying something new. And yeah, one of the ideas that came to me was, you know, let's show up at work with a playful attitude versus you know, a lot of us have that old pattern of, if I make a mistake, I'm gonna get, get blamed versus I think Danette said, you know, learning. When you said learning, I thought, yes, that's something I love about work is a workplace where mistakes are encouraged because that's how we learn. That's how we grow. Yeah, absolutely, Alan. And, you know, actually, I just um, the other day edited our Magical Learning podcast that mum did with uh, Renna, and she was talking about purpose and how that sort of uh, comes together. So I suggest people go back. I think it's two episodes and you have a listen to a, a little bit more about kind of purpose and sort of your coming together as a whole being and stuff. I thought that was really interesting. So love that, Al. Uh, great insight. Let's go to Danette. Danette, bringing more fun to work, what does that mean to you? So I have to say... Um let's start right here with the podcast because for me <laughs> this is the best end to every week is just to have these wonderful conversations lots of laughter and we learn and so one of my strongest values is lifelong learning and so for me anytime you know and Al to your point about mistakes and learning and I really love that insight I call mistakes mistakes because then I laugh at myself and I go oh you no one's died. I can learn from this. And so even just making that a little bit silly is enough to bring out the smile. And it, for the viewers, look at Al's face when I said my snakes. Because <laughs> that's exactly what I do. I think too that when we, you know, sometimes teams will have to work really hard on a particular thing. There are times but when their brains are going to need a break. And so it could be that you have a puzzle that people play with in between, you know, when they get up from their desk and move a, a piece of the puzzle or something. But it's remembering that the more, if our team is under pressure, that we can give them a relief valve through a little bit of fun, that often then resets their brain to work better. Because the moment we're really seriously concentrating, notice my face for the viewers, 
we tend to frown and that tends to trigger the threat response. And so then the people are working against their brain to actually solve the issue. So if we can smatter a few bits of fun in that, you'll actually find that your projects, etc., often are solved better and your people feel better because they're getting that release from the stress because we want to put those feel-good chemicals into people's brains. I think also um, questions can create fun too. So I, you know... It could be, for me, I love inspiration. And so, you know, what's inspiring you at the moment? And what's something funny about what's inspiring you? And getting people to share that. Again, it's just a great connector. Um, it only takes a couple of minutes. And it's just awesome. So there's some of my ideas. I've got more, but I'll finish there for the moment. Just when Danette said about renaming the stakes at the farm last year, we named them Hiccups. And I was loading a truck out of the big bin, not paying attention to what I was doing. I was tired, overloaded the truck, spilled a heap of grain on the ground. And Andy's dad came running over to the tractor. And as he's climbing up the ladder of the tractor, my automatic shame spiral thing started. And I thought, oh no, I've stuffed it up. And he opened the door and he said, that was a big hiccup. <laughs> we both laughed. I thought it was the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's a great reframe there, and I love that insight as well. Um, I, I also, as I was doing a bit of research, what you're talking about, uh, Danette, kind of reminded me of one of the bits of research that I didn't actually end up putting in, but I thought was interesting, was that some people were defining fun at a, at a workplace as also an ability to remove danger. So it's not necessarily that you're enjoying the space, but it's removing the negative elements. So um, it can be, you know, that you know some people have a pretty easy work where they can just watch a TV show while they're kind of inputting data or whatever. Ever. not recommended but you know obviously that's a way you can approach that work and for those people that job's good and fun because they just don't have the negative things where they're stressed out about their work they're just cruising through it so that can be another way to kind of look at it and also i wanted to mention before i was talking about renner's podcast which i may have just edited out as i was thinking about it but i when i mentioned purpose i realized i'm forgot to talk about the main thing that I wanted to talk about, which was that Al was talking about how, you know, challenges can be overwhelming and it can be difficult. But she was saying that, you know, actually what we're supposed to be doing is just learning from these challenges. They're all lessons and each of them is making us better. So challenges also can be um, a sort of positive thing for us as well. And therefore she frames challenges as actually fun because she's looking at it as what's the lesson I'm going to learn out of this. So yeah. uh Love that. For her. Um, I wanted to kind of take the conversation in a slightly different direction where um, I worked in a workplace that gave off a lot of fun energy, but it didn't exactly have the fun while you were there. So I worked at a, um, at a TV studio for a little bit and all around they had built in all these sort of fun, classic fun elements. There's pool tables, table tennis tables, a little snacks fridge, um, a lot of fun paint everywhere and sort of uh, different rooms were sort of very fun and themed. But the business itself was struggling and so the actual energy in the whole place was that of you better not be working on this because we are, you know, we're laying off people, you know, every however so often so we don't have the time to waste to use this stuff so it was a really bizarre contrast to be in a space where if you were to be there for an hour you'd go oh this looks like a really fun place to work but then you realize those things are almost to be avoided you know um so i thought that was quite fascinating in terms of what fun in a workplace actually is versus what it might look like jez i love that too um because again People's brain tends to go, we're under pressure, so we need to double down on that and not have fun. And I um, work with a number of people who run their own businesses or their own practices. And when they get to that stage where nothing's working and they're like, oh, it's really bad, no one's buying anything from me, etc. I go, have you got kids? And they go, yeah. And I go, go play with the kids. Or go and take the day off and have some fun. And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. I need to work harder. And no, 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 you need to work smarter. And fun is smarter. And to every single one of the people that I suggest that, they all come back and they go, funny, I had fun with the kids instead of resenting the kids because I was you know, resenting them because I needed to get work done. They went and had fun. And then sales started coming in the next day or the day after. And they worked out that actually the old approach, which is let's double down and work harder, doesn't really work. 
because it doesn't work from a brain friendly perspective so the the fun bit is totally um, important and just to your point there for us as leaders we need to be careful about what are we messaging so if we create a culture that's got all of these fun looking things but the message is anytime there's a bit of uncertainty that you can't play with those things we as the leaders are actually messaging that fun is not part of the culture and yes i get that there are hard times and know that energetically you are way better once you've had a bit of fun than if you are just a stress bunny so it sounds counterintuitive to a lot of advice you get give it a go experiment with it have fun and just see the results that you get I love that example, Danette. I was thinking of a similar thing where you know, the boss says it's supposed to be fun, but they're putting out that negative vibe. And it reminded me of something Graham often says, you know, we are human beings. Yeah? It's how we are being affects things so much. And if we can go away, enjoy some time like that, doing an activity that's fun, it, it changes our state and we can bring that change state back to work. Totally. And Al, I was looking at some, why do um, employees leave workplaces and for most organizations it's the manager so the person they're working directly with and so again when we as a manager actually do have a bit of fun we make the workplace a little bit light-hearted it's more friendly we connect people are likely to stay and they're likely to stay longer so from a financial perspective the organization wins as does the manager as does the employee so there's a lot of good reasons why fun actually needs to be part of what we do and i love those insights you just had al thank you yeah and i also just want to say this reminded me you know what you're talking about Danette, there with people who are getting really stressed out and it's you know even if you have old habits where you were much more efficient and did more things you have to ask yourself do those old habits also lead you to burnout because if that's the case, then if you keep doing it, it's the same reaction. So maybe it's time to alter those. Maybe you're not doing as much, but maybe it's giving you more sustainability across the long term, which is what this fun element really is at some level. It's also a sustainability element as well, which is really interesting. Yeah, I've, I've just got something to share. So I've been experimenting the last couple of weekends, except for last weekend, on doing a digital detox. So Friday afternoon, I put all of my devices, including my mobile phone, in my office and I shut the door and I don't reopen it till Sunday morning. And what I do is I go and read, which I love and that's fun for me. I get out in the garden, I get outside. And what I have discovered is that for the next week, I am more effective, I am more efficient, and the quality of my work has gone through the roof. And what I've discovered is I'm spending a day without distraction, focused on just enjoying my life. And then the flow on effects to your point about burnout and stuff like that. It's just like, I feel like I've had a vacation just having one day off devices every week. And for me, it's fun because it's like, I've realized how distracting those devices can be. So sorry, I just wanted to share that because what you were saying, it just sort of led into that. It's what a glowing review of technology. One day off of it feels like a vacation. So that's, it's a good insight though. I, I, that is a good point. Um, sorry, Al, so I was going to ask you, Al, did you have anything else you wanted to um, chat about today around uh, bringing more fun to work? Oh, two things coming up for me, Jez. Just what Danette said then, it's something I've been paying attention to for quite a while since you went away. I think you had a week away, Danette. And it was all around getting away from technology and and just chilling out, meditation. And I seem to have to hear things a few times, like when you're mentioning there, I'm just thinking I need to stop. And again, like with that machine scenario, I look at people as machines who can just go and go and go. Yet until we stop and I guess do that maintenance, yeah, those machines get slower and slower. And the other one, which I've been hearing from Graham for quite a while is awareness. If we don't have awareness of that, we just keep doing, I think it's Einstein said the, the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. You know, if we're not having fun at work, yeah, let's do something different. Try something else. Al, I love that word you used there, which was maintenance, because I feel like that's such a good way to put this. So it's sort of like putting your energy in a maintenance context. It does need it sometimes. Uh, and that's uh, and that's true of everything that has, you know, has a lot of horsepower, 
and is really strong. You know, all those things need maintenance. They can't last forever. So uh, everyone needs it as well. So I love that insight there, Al. Danette, did that have anything for you? I think that we need to reframe work as work includes fun. Fun is part of that maintenance that Al was just talking about because we aren't machines. We know from the um, science that our performance goes up and if we have a break, we refuel or maintain and we go high again. People who go like this without breaks, without fun, think their performance goes straight up. In fact, they hit a, a wall and it starts to go down. And unless they do things like have breaks, have fun, they are not going to be able to go to higher levels. So it is really important, I think, in workplaces for us to ask, how can we make this more fun? How can we make this more enjoyable? And I think for each individual, you know, what does fun look like, feel like for you? And can you bring some of it to work to make um, work joyful and full of fun? Because actually the science shows that that's actually going to lead to more high performance. I, I want to share this, and it's got nothing to do with fun so much as... Um, I was reading Seth Godin's latest um, book, which is um, around the Song of Story, something like that. It's not the right name. But in it, he talked about the difference between curiosity and wonder. I always thought curiosity, and we talk a lot about this on the podcast, you know, being curious. He said one step up from that is in a conversation, sit in wonder. And I think of wonder as actually if you sat there, that would be so fun. Because you, you're not having to have any answer. You're just going on a journey with the other individual. And even if it's a hard conversation, you're learning and you're growing, which is that bit, you know, if we make a mistake, it's a hiccup. And if I'm in wonder and I stuff it up a little bit, if I'm sitting in wonder, that other person's not, is unlikely to get offended because they can see that we're genuinely trying to go on that journey with them so i really like that distinction between curiosity and wonder and everything if we can bring a little bit of fun it just makes life so much better i reckon we should try random acts of you know we talk about random acts of kindness what about random acts of fun even not just at work just doing random acts of fun to make other people's lives a bit better how much fun would that be i love that that's my two bobs worth (laughs) It's, it sort of all feels like it's coming together in some ways because we're talking about the maintenance and we're talking about fun and, uh, and we talk about uh, sort of lack of responsibility. You're talking about coming into a conversation with wonder. That's sort of that lack of responsibility to do anything with the conversation, just come in open and just see what happens. So this conversation kind of loops back in on itself in many ways, which is very cool. Um, Danette, did you have any final things you wanted to share or yeah, any additional things you want to share about bringing more fun to work? I just think that this has been a really great conversation and I suspect not all organisations actually think about having a conversation about fun with their people. And I would say that maybe starting that conversation and how do we just make this a little bit more fun, I would suspect you're going to see things like increased employee engagement if the viewpoints are taken on and some action is taken. And honestly, we know from the brain science that fun actually makes for a way productive, way more productive workplace. So let's see. We'd love our viewers and our listeners to share about some of the changes they might be doing around fun. Thank you, Al, and thank you, Jess. Great conversation. <laughs> yeah, random acts of fun. Hopefully people are doing that. And I think, you know, um, something that I'm taking away is that it's almost like uh, employees are kind of like plants in a garden you know you can try and just make them so that they just make fruit but that's not really going to help if you give them the best situation you put them in a nice warm environment that matches what they want you know you build a good environment for them and then they sort of if they can thrive in the best possible way for themselves then you're actually going to get more produce so uh you know that's kind of a way i'm looking at it al any final thoughts today on today's conversation and bringing more fun to work two main things i've written down here jess are wonder and I guess that stood out for me because it's the opposite to sitting there in blame or judgment and being right. Let's wonder what other possibilities are out there. And the other one which Danette mentioned was ask questions 
which to me that's the opposite of sitting there complaining about you know work's not right you know all the stress we have it's you know, ask questions how can we make this more fun and I come up with an example at work we have a tower crane which is the big high crane you see on top of a multi-story building every once in a while someone has to walk out to the very end of that to check the pulley on the end with a harness on I'm wondering if the boss would let me do that because I think that'd be lots of fun <laughs> Can you get them to yeah. take a video when they do so we can share with the listeners and the viewers, Al? <laughs> That'll make That'd it even more awesome. fun than it. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, Al, we're excited to see it and uh, make sure you don't have too much fun. <laughs> there we go. There's a bit of extra fun. I found that there's the media section in this, so there's a little sound effect. <laughs> I love, love it. that. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. This has been a very fun conversation. Uh, thanks to everybody that's been sharing. I highly recommend also you jump onto our uh, YouTube page. I'm putting up little clips there so you can check out little highlights of the podcast. Going strong, and we're loving it. And also, um, we are officially in the top 50% of all podcasts now with our listenership. So thanks, everybody, for sharing. That is so uh, awesome. We're loving it. So I guess, everybody, as always, have a magical week. <laughs>